Good morning, good morning. I know there's a lot of new people in the room, and so I just want to introduce myself. My name's Tyler, and so me and my wife, um, we help lead in the family ministry. I help in the kids' ministry, and just um, just really humbled and honored uh, just to even be up here, and just so thankful for John and Nicole and the family just being home. I know a lot of us are, and it's just so good, just the, the timing of the Lord, and just even everything John shared, just the, we want to be people of joy, we want to be people of prayer, and um, just even thinking as I was praying before coming up here, like the, ch- the, church is, the church is real. The church is alive. Like God is real. Like the world has nothing on us. Like the, nothing out there compares to what's happening in here in this room. Um, and we're just tasting it, just a little bit of it. Um, and so I just encourage you guys, if this is your first Sunday, stick it out. Like stay here, grow here, grow with us. Um, we're just excited to get to know you. We're excited just to go deep in the word together and get to know who you are, what you struggle with, um, and just be able to walk with God together. And so just thankful, so thankful this morning. And so um, again, just the timing of God with all these messages, we're gonna be wrapping up our, our godliness series. It's crazy, We've been, it's been I think nine weeks, maybe two months, um, but we're gonna be wrapping up this morning on love and just so fitting, just, just talking about love and what it is and who God is, he's a God of love and how we're supposed to actually love one another um, and love our enemies. And so just excited for today. And so Colossians 3.14, wanted to start here. Paul says, beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And right before this, he, he lists things like compassion and patience and kindness and humility and gentleness. And again, all these godly traits that we've been talking about for the last Um, two months. He says, beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And it really is the the glue of the church. Love is the glue of the church, the adhesive of the church. And 11 years ago, I mean, our our vision has always been to to love God, to love each other, and to love those who don't know Jesus. That vision set before us um, is what unites us together. Um, And we actually get to go out into the world and carry this message of hope. And so... um, as we just look at this, I wanted to start this morning um, looking back um, to the first message John shared on the foundations of godliness. He, he mentioned three questions. Well, the first one is, am I devoted to God? The second, am I pleasing to God? And the third, do I love God? This set up the whole series um, back in April. And these are three great, great questions that I encourage everyone to write down and to go back to. Um, because we're going we're gonna to forget a lot of the stuff that we've heard these last nine weeks. Um, but what we can take away is these three questions and bring them into our times with the Lord, week in and week out, for years and years and years to come. Um, and when we look back at joy, when we look back at love, when we look back at all these things we've been talking about, we can say, am I, am I devoted to God? Um, is the way I'm acting, is it pleasing to him? And it, do I love him? What we're going to be talking about today. And so love and all these other godly graces that we've been been talking about for the last two months are only produced in a life that is deeply devoted to them, to him, to God. And if we miss this, then we miss the aim of this entire series. Um, If we're just focused on getting better character, getting getting stronger in patience, um, we miss the main point of actually focusing in on God. Um, We can't just be focused on character change. We're never just going to be more humble, be more patient out of our own strength. Um, We're going to be left unsatisfied. Um, We're going to be left miserable. And we're not going to, we're not actually going to see the fruit if we miss the aim of this entire series. And God is concerned with our, with our hearts and everything we do. He's concerned with our heart and our motive behind why we're even here this morning. Why are you even sitting in the seat? Um, If someone invited you this morning, why did you come? Um, was it to grow in all these things or was it to know God, to love him, to be devoted to him? And God is most pleased and we are most satisfied when we turn to him daily in prayer and admit our weakness and our need for him. He is most, we are most satisfied in him when we go to him and he is most pleased with us when we go to him. And over time through our relationship with him, we will bear this fruit of godliness. It will come. Not, not overnight, um, but through years and years and years of spending time with him, of walking with him, of getting up in the morning when it's hard and it's difficult and you're tired, 
but opening up your Bible and praying, opening up your Bible and, and asking him what he's speaking to you. And I would, even this past week, um, just some, some men I walked close to, just through even conversations or texts or phone calls, just all, all throughout just this one week, um, just prayer requests came in of like, hey, how can we pray for you in different moments? And it was uh, to abide more, to depend on God, to um, have strength in the quiet place, um, to grow in my in intimacy for him and to enjoy him. It, it wasn't for worldly things or fleshly things. It, it can really be summed up in one thing. Lord, help me love you more with my whole life. Like all of those things, abiding, walking with him, it, it helped me grow in my love for you. I saw that in each and every single one of those men who have been following the Lord, not for super long, but for a long time. Um, and so there's just this place where we, we want to grow in our love for God. And all these prayerful desires can, um, it really just goes back to our devotion. And our devotion to God is fueled by our love for him and our daily devotion sustains our love for him. It's a full circle. As we, as we desire to grow in our devotion, we grow in love. And as we love him more and we grow in love, we grow in our devotion. Love is not so much a character trait like everything we've been talking about for the past two months, but it's the inner motivation of the heart for everything that we do. It's the inner motivation for every single thing that we do in our Christian walks. And our love for God and love for one another, it was, it's what drives all of our thoughts, all of our motives, all of our words, all of our actions. Every single thing we do comes out of a place of if we love God and if we love one another. If we love God, we will live a life devoted to him and we will grow in holiness. We will seek to be holy. And if we love other people, we will seek to be humble and patient, putting their interests ahead of our own. But is this the way we're living? Are we living in this way that loves God with our whole heart? Are we motivate, motivated by love in all that we do? And even just going through this week and asking myself this question, I, I wanted to say yes, like, yes, of course. Like, of course I'm motivated by love and spending time with him and waking up in the morning or I'm motivated in, in my love for my family, for everything that I do, but he, he knows my heart. He knows my lack of love constantly every single day um, for him and for those around me. And even this past week, I mean, not even two, two days ago, um, we have a daughter who's almost six months, and for many of the parents in the room, you know that feeding them is, at that age, is just a mess. It's more gets on you or on them or just all over the, the place than actually in their mouth. Um, it's great. And so, have kids. It's awesome. Um, but no, just in that moment, I was like, God, give me patience. 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 And Sarah's telling me, you have to be patient. And she's like chewing on the seat. She's like looking all around, flopping all over. And then in, the, in that moment, I mean, I've been going through studying love and, and looking at it and even this place of, I want my heart to be motivated. And I, in that moment, I said, Lord, give me love for my daughter. I mean, I love her, but give me a love in this moment, in what I'm doing, feeding her for my daughter. And in, immediately, I mean, by his grace, by his power, he gave me a love for her that actually gave me patience in that moment. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, when, it's motiv when, our, when our patience and our humility is motivated by love, we can actually grow in all these things. And, and it's so simple, yet it is the Christian walk. It is every single day and everything that we do. And really, this is, this is all of us every day. Um, this will continue to be all of us. We will never, ever walk in perfect love this side of heaven, ever. We will never have perfect love for our family, our enemies, or even for God this side of heaven. It's something we get to look forward to in the life to come, um, but we all struggle. But God's desire for us is to grow in love and to love as he loves, but to rest and land on who he is. He's the only one who loves perfectly because he is love. Meditating on his perfect love becomes our strength in whatever we're going through. From our sins, from our fears, from our pains, our sufferings, his love covers us completely. 
It's why he did what he did. Um, it's what, why you're in this seat this morning. And a comforting verse um, I went to even this past week was Lamentations 3, 21 through 23. It says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And it was such a comforting passage and just referred to it many times throughout this week and whatever I was going through or thinking about other people and just the places of his, his loving kindness never ceases. No matter how we act, if we are in him, his loving kindness never ceases. And he is the only one who is faithful. First John 4.8, 1 John 4.16 4, says, says, God is love. His glory, his holiness, his goodness, his character, his actions, his essence is love. Every single part of God is love. His justice, his mercy, everything a part of him. Every single act he does is in love. It is what he is like. All of him is all loving. And the Bible from beginning to end is the story of God's love for his children, God's love for those who are his. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never ceases. And his love for his own is why he never gives up on those who are his. His love, he loves us because he chooses to. He loves us because he loves us. He actually chooses to love us. And we didn't deserve his love. None of us, no one in this room deserved his love. Romans 3 says there's, no, there's none who does good, not even one. No one out in the world, no one in this room does good, but God loved us despite of it. It's not based on anything. His love is not based on anything we had to offer or attract us to him, but because he chose to do it, because he chose to love us. But that's how good God is. And as we recognize more and more what God has sacrificed to save us, how much we have been forgiven, and how much, how much he loves us, our love for him and others grows. As we look to God and see his goodness, see his love, and that he is full of love for us, but that we didn't deserve it, this actually grows our love for him and love for one another. John 4, 19, famous passage, we love because he first loves us. We have it in our, even in our room, and I, I don't look at it often, but even looking at this past week, it's just, we love out of a place of being loved by him first. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2 says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. And one pastor says, it's, it's that love to us that is to flow through us. And that just, it blows my mind sometimes just even reading the passages on, on God's love and his forgiveness and just his sacrifice and, and sending his son. And it's like, I'm actually supposed to display this love. Um, it's challenging, it's hard to even think of. And sometimes we even diminish love and how we're actually supposed to show it. Um, but we actually are called to love the way he loves and be imitators of him in it. And by his grace and power, we begin to love as he loves over time as we spend time with him. And a, again, a famous passage on, on love, sometimes at weddings, um, but really this, this is who God is. And Paul is encouraging and challenging the Corinthian church um, in 1 Corinthians 13, that if, if they do anything, anything for God, anything for each other without love, it's, it's all in vain. It doesn't count, it doesn't matter. And so 1 Corinthians 13, four through seven, again, this is who God is, but who we are called to be. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And just even looking at this passage, it's, it, it's, un, it's unattainable. Um, and again, that's, that's not the point. It, the point is him. The point is looking at his love. The point is being growing in our devotion to him. But based on God's love for us, based on this passage, um, I just wanted to highlight two marks 
of Christian love this morning and how we are to love one another as God loved us. And the first one is love gives whatever the cost. Whatever the cost, love gives. And then second, love sacrifices to forgive. And this is how God displayed his love towards us. So love gives whatever the cost and love sacrifices to forgive. Biblical love is an act of selfless sacrifice every single time. It does not seek its own. In 1 John 3, 16 through 18, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. And John asks us to give to each other um, when, whenever there is a need, even if it comes at great cost to us, because Jesus laid down his life for us. It cost him everything. It cost him his life. He loved us to the max by giving us everything, by giving us of himself. His love is the greatest because he gave the greatest possible gift. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Sometimes we hear this passage over and over again. I mean, many of you guys know it and you've read it, but he, he loved us so much that he gave of himself. John 15, 12 through 13, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one laid down his life for his friends. He laid down his entire life for us because he loved us. And again, not because we deserved it. From beginning to the end, he loved perfectly. And that culminated at the cross where he paid the price for our sins. He gave everything. And love always results in actions. It always results in actions. If we truly love God and truly one another, again, we don't love in word or, or we love in deed and in action. Love inclines us and directs us to give ourselves to one another. And we do this in, I just wanted to highlight three ways. We do this in serving, we do this in listening, and we do this in speaking the truth. And so we love one another by serving, listening, and speaking the truth. Serving the body, serving your roommate, serving your spouse, serving those who are hard to serve, um, serving your neighbor, your coworker, whoever it is. Selfless serving is what marks us as believers, what marks us as Christians, and what shows our love to one another. Whenever there's an opportunity, serve. Whenever there's a moment, you can make that decision to serve, to give, even if it costs you greatly, or you can go your own way. And again, there's a lot of different moments and times you, we go through stuff, and again, it's, it's pray and ask the Lord to, to show you when you are to say yes. But Jesus always said yes. When he was walking down the road with his disciples and the woman reached out and grabbed the end of his garment, he stopped in that moment. When the disciples wanted to rush to the next city, he was always willing to be patient with people and love them in that moment. And that's exactly how we're supposed to selflessly serve one another. And so how are you loving with your time and your talents and your treasures? With everything God's given you, he's given you every second, He's given you every single dollar in your pocket. He's given you so many different gifts and talents. We have so many talented people in this church. But how are we actually using those things that God gives us to serve one another, to love one another? And is it costing you something? Is your, act is your serving costing you something? Jesus served to the max through his life and in his death. In a, in a passage even we went through in our marriage series this, this past, uh, I guess it was about two months ago, just with it within our families was Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. And again, this is something that men, how are we doing serving our wives? Women, how are you doing serving your husbands? Actually loving them, serving them out of this selfless place and, and giving it, giving your whole life to them giving your whole life to those around you. The context in which you serve must be love. Again, it's, it's a motivation of the heart. 
And so we need to pray and ask God to give us a love for the person right in front of us. Otherwise, we're, we're not gonna be serving in the way God wants us to serve. Whether you come to Sunday service and you're on worship or you're uh, serving coffee or a bagel or you're in kids ministry, the motivation should be love, but we need to ask God to give us that love so that we can actually come and serve the way he wants us to serve. We don't just serve to serve. We don't serve just because we're asked, but we serve because we, are, we have been loved and we do love those around us. And so is it because you love the person right in front of you? I think that's a good question just to bring into your times when you're coming and driving to Sunday service. Um, are you coming because you love these kids? Are you coming because you love the people in these seats? Um, are you coming because you love God? Um, he really is our motivation. And second, we can love by, by listening to each other. Love patiently listens. God is always there to listen to our prayers. We know that. Every morning, every evening, every afternoon, every second of every day, he is so patiently, and his ear is always ready for us whenever we need it. Psalm 116, one through two, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I shall call upon him as long as I live. And sometimes the most loving thing to do is just to sit with someone and to listen to them and to hear what they're going through, to hear what they're struggling with, to hear the good things in their life, not just the struggles, but to, to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep is really how we display love for one another. Love is willing to get involved with others' interests and concerns. Love doesn't just focus on, on yourself. Um, we need to be loved, and so we want to show that love to one another by listening to each other and what we're going through. Love is not surface level. I mean, even this morning, it's like the worship and praying for one another. Um, I, I love this church because it's not shallow. I love coming here because we actually do love each other and we do listen and we do pray for one another and, and the world doesn't know what they're missing out on. Um, God wants us to, to patiently listen to one another and not just to go into our workplaces and into our weeks and go to life group quickly and leave right at nine o'clock and um, come to church right at 10.30 and leave at one. Um, but whenever he's calling you to sit with someone, just to listen to what they're going through, that's how love is built and that's how God grows our love for one another, to really care, to sit and listen. But lastly, we don't, we don't just listen, we speak the truth. Love always speaks the truth. And again, our world um, has completely ruined this word love. And we hear love is love so many times. We see it all over the place. But God is love, and that's what we need to tell people. Um, it's not about what we come up with in our mind. It's not a just allowing people to go about in their sin. But love is speaking the truth in love. And again, whether it's with each other or with those outside the church, when, when you hear someone going through a sin or you recognize a habit they're going through and you're patiently listening with them, over time as, as God gives you in your heart a word of encouragement or a word of truth or a scripture to, to share with them, text them, um, speaking the truth in love with someone is, is how we grow and is the most loving thing we can do. Ephesians 4, 14 through 16. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head of even Christ. And at the end of verse 16, for the building up of itself in love. Love always speaks the truth. And again, it's gonna come at a great cost sometimes, um, but it always has to be in love sharing the truth, sharing the gospel, going out in the streets and actually giving someone a tract. And no matter what, they're, what they say, you're patient with them, you listen to them. Um, but we talk so much even in Rome about, man, we, I heard so many people, we had so much time that I was actually able to spend two hours with someone. It was great, it was amazing. And then we get back here and we have 10 minute conversations. But are we, are we sitting with people and patiently listening? Um, 
and taking the time to say, I'm sharing the gospel with you because I actually love you. I don't know you, but God has given me a great love for you. Um, God does not love their sin. God does not love them unless they're his. And this is a hard message to receive. This is a hard message to share. Um, but it is truth, and it's what our world needs. And every single time when we go out, I, I encourage you guys, before praying for anything, pray for a deep love for the lost. Pray for a deep love for those who don't know him, because that's, God, that's God's heart. He desires all men to come to him. And we are really to go out there in love to share the truth with a dying and broken and hurting world who has no idea who God is or what love is. And the second, um, love sacrifices to forgive. Love bears and endures all things. This word bears means it, love covers. When God forgave us in our sin, when, he, when Jesus went to the cross, his, the forgiveness for us covered us completely as we go to him. 1 John 4, 7 through 11, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Such a rich passage. Um, just seeing his forgiveness, just seeing the way Jesus went to the cross and completely covered every single one of our sins, past, present, and future. His forgiveness was full. And he came and sought me out in my sin when I wasn't looking for him and forgave me for everything. I don't deserve it. And that is why his love is so great. Romans 5, 6 through 8. For while we are still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God gave everything in order that he might forgive us. He gave everything. So do we love enough to forgive with or without apologies for the wrongs done to us? We've been forgiven so much. Even two weeks ago, reading the passage of, of the king who forgave the servant and the servant turned and didn't forgive for such a minor repayment. Thinking about his forgiveness and what Jesus went to the cross to actually pay for should strengthen us to forgive quickly every single time we're, we're done wrong to. We love by being quick to forgive. And sometimes this is so hard, so hard with those who are close to us, with those we don't know, when we're mistreated, in our workplace, driving, every single moment of the day, there's so many times when we, we withhold forgiveness because we feel like we're owed justice. But justice was paid for at the cross for each and every single one of us, for every wrong that would be done to us. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ Jesus and Christ also has forgiven you. So many of these passages is just like he did. Love as he loves, forgive as he forgives. These are high, high callings. Um, and we know we can't do it without him. We know we can't just muster up enough strength to love as he loves and forgives as, forgive as he forgives, we need to go to him. No matter the mistreatment or wrong done to us, we choose to forgive because he's forgiven us. And love takes the initiative. Um, love actually goes beyond the point of residing it in your heart, but love actually takes the initiative to go to a person and, for, and forgive them and talk to them and listen to them and actually do the work of, of what Jesus has done for us. Um, again, we don't want a shallow church. We want a church that has these hard conversations and forgives each other, but goes to one another when there's wrongs done to us. 
Love doesn't, dem- or th- we don't demand justice or even change behavior from our brother. Um, time and time again, we're going to be done wrong to. Um, but time and time again, we're called to forgive. And we love those who are hard to love and those who least deserve it. Those who you even think of in your mind who maybe you think don't deserve it. You didn't, none of us deserved it. None of us deserve this forgiveness, this goodness, this love that God's given us. Loving forgiveness causes us to deal gently with our brother or sister, even when they sin against us. And sacrificing to forgive leads to humility, leads to patience, leads to grace and peace and gentleness and joy. There's joy in forgiving quickly. Time and time again, I know you guys know it, when, when you forgive and it's hard in that moment to forgive, but when you forgive, there's freedom. There's freedom when we actually choose to forgive those who have wronged us, when we, when we choose to forgive time and time again. And so I've, I've personally, just looking at love sacrifices to forgive, love, love gives whatever the cost. Over the last almost 11 years, I've, I've witnessed and experienced so much love um, in my life, in this church. I'm here today because someone shared the gospel or with me in a hotel on University Boulevard 11 years ago. Um, grew up in the Catholic Church, but someone took the time to share about grace, share about mercy, because God put it on their heart. And I, w- I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, just so thankful, um, just for the sacrifice of so many godly men and women in this church to, to, to give and to sacrifice their time and just the hours and hours of discipleship and phone calls and texts and prayers and just every single one of these things that I was going through this week is like, man, I've experienced that. I've been loved so much by God and by his, his people. Just the times people have prayed for our family, our kids, our parents, the times when people have brought us meals even last night, it was like ants everywhere, just people cleaning up and asking if they, can, if they can do stuff. And we cleaned up our house in like 20 minutes and people did dishes. And I was like, I, I, what do I do? I don't, everyone's doing it for me. And we got back last night and it was just such a blessing actually to get home and have a, like a clean house. And just that, that love from this church has, I mean, his love, keeps me in it, but the love of the people in this room sustain me and sustain our family in the ways that we don't deserve it and we don't necessarily ask for it. Sometimes we're prideful and we say, no, 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 I can do it. And I'll do it when I get home. Um, But love gives at great cost. Um, And I've witnessed that so much in this church and so much by John and Nicole and other leaders. Um, You guys don't see it all. You don't see how much sacrifice and giving happens in the week in and week out and um, just the people over the ministries and over everything in this church. There's so much love that happens. And I've personally witnessed it in, the, in places of just people I know here, just you're going through stuff, but you still desire to love those around you. I know people in here who are giving rides to people who they, they drive 45 minutes out of the way and come back another 30 minutes just to bring someone to church. We don't know all this stuff that's happening behind the scenes, but God has done a mighty work over these last 10 years to really make us a a loving church. Um, This encouraged me this week and I hope it encourages you guys. Um, But I also know that God desires uh, desires for us to continue in love Um, and I don't run often um, I do one 5K, to be honest, once a year, <laughs> so <laughs> for all those runners. But uh, just in that run that I do, um, there's those moments, those checkpoints at the one mile, the two mile, the three mile, where they give you that little cup of water and like, either like you barely grab it or like you take a sip or it's like you, you, you just grab a hold of it in that moment. But it is so refreshing, even if you get a drop or even if you splash it on your face. And I feel like that's so such a good picture of what it means to, to look back on the love that God's shown us and look ahead, um, but look ahead at so much more that he has for us. It's refreshing to look back, to be encouraged, to look around the room and thank people who've been so loving to you, um, but God calls us to continue on, to press on. And so I wanted to read three passages 
Philippians 1, 9. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment. 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 through 10. Now as the love of the brethren, you have no need for anyone to write to you for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed, you do practice it toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. I, I do feel encouraged that God's saying, Antioch Orlando, you do practice love. You are a loving church. Don't forget that and be encouraged by it. But this part, but we urge you, brethren, to excel, excel still more. We'll never arrive at any of the things we're talking about ever this side of heaven. We're called to excel still more. And so I encourage you um, to ask yourself two questions this week. Bring them to life group or bring them to your discipleships, your time with him. But how have you been loved by God and your church family? And second, how are you doing loving in return? So one should encourage you and strengthen you and one should challenge you to excel still more in this love. I believe the Lord will encourage us and challenge us um, as we look at him and as we look back at all the love he's shown us through Christ, through the cross, through reaching out in our sin and grabbing us, through coming here this morning. Just looking at him will help us grow in love. And so as we close this morning, I just wanna give two ways we can grow in this love. And I invite you as we go into ministry time to, to get prayer and also to pray for one another um, we want to pray for love to abound in our church and in each other. Again, it's not inward focus, but it's outward focus to him and to others. And the two things are to, to take responsibility, but to remain fully dependent on him. And this really is the Christian walk. It doesn't make sense, but we're supposed, we're supposed to take full responsibility of everything that he's taught us but we're supposed to remain fully dependent because we can't do it. We can't actually do these things. God has given us everything we need. He's given us his word. He's given us his people. He's given us worship. He's given us teaching us how to pray even in this next season, which I'm so thankful for, I can't wait for, because we wanna go deep with him. But he's given us everything we need. He's given us tools to fight with but we actually have to walk in it. We actually have to use these things. And even this past week, I was looking back at, um, we went through the, uh, the series of Mark, we went through the gospel of Mark, um, and I was looking back at Mark 12, 28 through 34. Back in November, 2022, John gave a message, um, and it was just so, so refreshing. And one of the scribes came to Jesus and said, what commandment is foremost of all? Jesus replied, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And again, this looks, it's like simple, right? Because it's, it's this big, but it's impossible. And even looking back at that message, just John just shared, it, this is meant to, to break our knees and show us our great need for Jesus, to show us our great need for the Lord. There's no such thing as perfect love in us. It's only in him. And there's no such thing as a perfect church. We will never be perfect. But as we look to him, as we get on our knees and, de and devote our lives to him and wrestle with these things and ask, us to, ask him to help us, we will grow in love. But we need to repent for any lack of love residing in our hearts towards our brothers and sisters, towards a family member, towards our neighbors, towards that person who's maybe hard to forgive. There needs to be a place where we actually do go on our face and repent um, and ask God to, to cover us because he does every single time. And repent to any lack of love towards him. Are you just getting into your quiet times? Are you spending time with him? Are you opening your Bible to get something from him and not just get, wanting to spend time with him? to actually desiring to, to, to love him, to grow in your devotion to him. That's what this is all about. That's why we do church, is to know him, not to just get better, not just to grow in these Christian characters. That'll happen over time, but it's his doing, it's his work. 
So I encourage you guys to turn to him this morning and be comforted, comforted that he hears you and covers you. And the second and the last thing, we need to remain fully dependent. Pray for the Holy Spirit to apply his word to your heart and to your daily life as he helps you be a loving person. Romans 5.5, 5, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts. It has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Only God over time can cause love, this type of love, biblical love, to grow in our hearts. And we need to rest in his perfect love for us. So whether you're new this morning or you've been following God for years and years and years, you need to rest in his perfect love for you. Lamentations, I want to read it again, 321 through 23. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never ceases, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. He will be, faith he will be faithful to make us a loving church as we seek him and devote our lives to him. So don't be focused so much on loving better, loving better, loving better, loving more, loving more, being patient, being patient. Focus on him this morning. He is the only one who's faithful. He is gracious and a loving God, and he desires for us to become a gracious and loving church. And then we have the vision set before us just to love God, to love each other, and to love those who don't know him. And I encourage you guys to just be refreshed on that vision again, because that's what's gonna, it's not gonna change. I know John shares that a lot, but it's not gonna change. I'm thankful that it hasn't changed because that's, I mean, we, we talk about so much and we go through so much and it's so, it's so good to grow, but to, to look at him and knowing he is the one who gives us everything we need. And he is the one who will grow us through years and years and years of commitment to him. And so I'll pray for us and you guys encourage you to get around the room, pray for one another, pray for love, um, that God would grow us in this. As we end this, this season of being, call, being called to godliness, um, in a way we end the series, but we know it never ends. And so Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you that your loving kindness never ceases, never ceases to amaze us, never ceases to floor us. God, but you are the only one who's faithful and you will see it through and make us a loving church and bring more people in here by your love, not by our works. In Jesus' name, amen.